Welcome back guys. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can add some of the already existing sensors that come with Gazebo to our drone. There are a plethora of these sensors and you can go and take a look at all the available sensors right here uh, at this link. But the sensor that we're going to be focusing on today is a 2D LiDAR. And a 2D LiDAR um, is basically a sensor that will get you a bunch of distance readings in a plane. And these distance readings can form the information that you need to um, operate a obstacle avoidance algorithm um, for your drone. And I'm going to be showing you guys that in the next episode. But what I really want to get across to you in this episode is how you can add these different available sensors to the drone. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open Sublime. Then we're going to go to IQ Sim and then Worlds and then Runway.World. And we're going to be basically uh, taking a look at the drone model in this world. So go ahead and go down to um, Model, the tag that says Model, and then Name equals Iris. And basically, this is kind of a short aside, but the Iris is actually a real drone made by 3DR. And 3DR kind of went bankrupt like five, six years ago, but this Iris drone still is one of the popular drones for the drone developers. Um, but without <laughs> basically enough of that, uh, we'll go back and talk about um, some of the code in here. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is this include and then URI and then it says model. And basically this is pathing uh, it basically says, look at the gazebo model's path and then find the model that says Iris with standoffs demo, right? And we actually downloaded this model a couple uh, tutorials ago when we downloaded the gazebo uh, workspace um, from Mercurial, if you guys remember that. And so basically it comes here and it goes, okay, go to the gazebo model's path and then look for the model that says Iris with standoffs demo. And then it puts it right there. And then there's this pose tag, and this pose tag says where in the world this model is going to be, right? And so that in itself would be enough to specify your drone model. But we've been also using the camera in some of the tutorials, so I went ahead and added us a sensor right here, which is the camera. And um, there are a couple of tags that are really um, that you really need to know. So there is one called link. Right? And this is basically an appendage to your robot that you're going to uh, link to your drone, right? And then with inside it, it has a bunch of other stuff like um, the pose with respect to the um, model, and then it has a place to specify the mass and inertia, and then what it looks like, and whatnot. So we're going to kind of skip over that for now, and then we're going to scroll down to where it says joint. And so a joint is a way to attach a link to your model. And basically, uh, there are a couple different types of joints. There's uh, ones that uh, pivot and then ones that are fixed. And there's a couple other ones um, that uh, you can choose. But um, let's just leave that there for now. So now we're going to go ahead and add our sensor to the drone. Now let's go ahead and come right back to the follow along. And let's go down and copy all of all of this code right here right into our um, world file. And go back to the world and then add it right between the slash joint tag and the slash model tag. And we'll go through what all this is doing. So um, basically right here we have a link and we named it Hokuyo link, which Hokuyo is the name of the LiDAR that this plugin has been modeled after. And uh, so basically that's just the name of the link. Then below it we have a pose tag and this pose is basically with respect to the base of the model and uh, then we keep going down and then you have a, a collision tag and this is basically the geometry in which Gazebo is calculating um, what uh, is a, f a physical boundary um, so like if you have a collision this is, this is the geometry that will actually be applied to the collision. And then below that, you have a visual tag, and this is showing. This is basically specifying what the model is actually going to look like. And we're using a mesh of the Hokuyo uh, lidar that came with the models that we downloaded a few tutorials ago. Then below that, we have some um, mass properties. And something to note about this is that you usually want to keep your mass properties really, really low uh, when you're adding sensors to your drone in Gazebo, just because. Um, if you have something that's really heavy, it usually requires recalibrating the drone, and that's kind of just a pain and unnecessary for just testing um, GNC 
uh, type code. So then the next thing in here is the sensor tag, and this kind of uh, specifies the behavior of the actual LiDAR. So uh, again, you have your pose tag, and then they have this visualize tag, and if it's true, then all the uh, lasers that are coming out of your LiDAR will um, be shown as blue, and so that's kind of useful to see what is actually happening with the LiDAR. And then below that, you have some other tags that specify more of the behavior of your LiDAR. And so if you have a real LiDAR with you and you're modeling your real LiDAR, then you would go ahead and fill this out so that um, it matches the behavior of what you've purchased in real life. Then uh, as you keep coming down, um, you have something that specifies um, more of the behavior of how it publishes the information to ROS. And then finally, you have your joint, which basically takes the link and connects it to your model. All right, so now that we got our LiDAR all coded up, let's go ahead and save this file and then go ahead, open up terminal and let's see what we actually did to the world. So go ahead, type ROS launch and then IQ underscore sim and then runway dot launch. Boom. All right, cool. So now basically what we notice is that we have this big circle of laser arrays and this is our LiDAR. And it's actually really cool because now uh, everything's set up. So if we end up inserting like a box, uh, we can just go ahead, put that there, and then um, it'll start reflecting these laser rays. And if we come over to our terminal, open up a new terminal, and then go ROS topic list, we will see that the um, topic spur laser scan is there. So we can go ahead, copy that, and then go ROS topic echo and then the name of that um, topic and then go hit enter and we can go and take a look at what is being uh, responded. So basically um, this goes around in a circle so some of the some of the laser returns are infinite because it's not getting any returns and then you have a bunch of readings on how far um, how far this object is based off of the angle and so now we have all this information which we can use to make object avoidance algorithms which is what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial so that's pretty much it for this one see you in the next one